Hi guys, so today we're going to respond to this video by the channel Endeavor. Um, it's called Postmodern Tyranny. Um, yeah, we're going to look at it. I have already watched it. Um, I'm also going to link it in the description if you want. Um, so yeah. We're going to look. Um, I recently read the essay, The Power of the Powerless by Václav Havel. In 1978, he was a political dissident in communist Czechoslovakia who would go on to become the first president of Czechoslovakia and later the Czech Republic following the fall of communism in 1989. The essay is about what can be done. To be fair, I could have already started, like, um, yeah, responding to, to some points, such as, for example, um, yeah, again. Um, the Eastern Bloc wasn't exactly communi communist um, since communism is a stateless, classless, and moneyless society. Um, again, um, nothing really, just that. <laughs> Would yeah, I guess it's just a minor detail, like, and I should probably watch the rest of the video before, like, ranting for five hours. Citizen in resistance to what Havel called a post totalitarian system. He described Czechoslovakia in the 1970s as post totalitarian because it was no longer a classical dictatorship like the Stalinist Soviet Union, where dissenters were regularly thrown into a gulag or put up against a wall and shot. Instead, it relied on a network of institutions loyal to the communist ideology of the regime, creating an atmosphere of fear, repression, and self censorship which traps the individual inside the system. So essentially the same, okay. Google famously uses the example of a green grocer who puts up a sign in his store window which reads, Workers of the World Unite. The rallying cry written by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels at the end of the Communist Manifesto. The act of placing the yes. sign in his window is not a vow of genuine belief in communism on the part of the green grocer, but a display of his submission to the regime. No one who walks by will notice the Workers of the World Unite sign. Um, maybe he actually supports it. Um, yeah, just saying. It's practically elevator music to anyone living in Czechoslovakia. But by not displaying yeah. a sign, he might note himself as a troublemaker, as someone who is not compliant with the system, thus bringing the pressure of the regime down upon him. So he displays the sign as his way of saying he is compliant, and in doing so, he's living within the lie of the communist system. He okay, yeah. Um, again, um, you should probably, like, actually give an example or something about, like, I don't know, saying, um, the capitalist system is tyrannic, um, I mean, it's true, um, but yeah, you kind of have to, like, explain why, um, especially in these sorts of videos, um, like, for example, I will say um, capitalism is tyrannic because it inherently exploits workers and, yeah, um, the, the, ones that, the ones that own the, the, the machines and the factories can just, like, basically just steal from the workers. Um, that would be an example of, like, you know, backing up the, like, my claim. Um, or actually giving nuance to it. Um, that's not what happened here. Again, also, um, maybe is it because um, the green grocer is like actually supports the, like actually believes in the works workers of the world unite. Um, why should he never like actually ask the person like? if they believe that but yeah um something that's just something that could actually happen i not actually believe in the principles found in the communist manifesto but he will pay lip service to them because the system based on them has power over him the sign signal keyword may um again this is, this seems like mostly projection um i'm not going to defend like the Eastern Bloc and yeah, there are authoritarian BS, but yeah, um, 
I'm also not going to like overly make lies about it. Yeah, seems pretty. Yeah, doesn't seem actually bugged up by anything. Um, again, you may want to explain like why is it alike? Why it like? Yeah, before um saying, oh no, look, it's a light. Like, um, yeah. Just saying, for example, like again, I can bring up the, for the, how to back up like a claim of. Capitalism is is at uh, is tyranny, um, or at least capitalism is bad. Um, yeah, like for example, saying, "Oh, yeah, it's because it's bloody workers," and yeah, n not just living in at that. Um, doesn't really, yeah, hold up any, hold up in any respect. Again, um, just because you think that, yeah, like, the workers of the world uniting is a good thing, um, doesn't mean you actually support that regime. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not a requirement. Like, for example, I myself, um, also the we live in that, but yeah, I, I just like this term block because of many reasons of, of, for example, um, yeah, not actually being that much of a that socialist, or yeah, many of the things they did, or like against um more libertarian socialists um or anarchists um yeah those that sort of stuff, but yeah. Mind, it no longer has the same amount of power over him. Others might notice that he has taken down the sign and either take it down if they are displaying it themselves, or be more skeptical whenever they see it. They too will have started to live in the truth. Havel writes that from this point can be- Again, the truth, but yeah, like, never actually... Yeah, pretty much based on an assumption that simply doesn't hold up, like, for more than- if you think about it for more than five seconds. Why exactly is that- is that the truth? Like, is there any argument? Like, how is the workers of the world not uniting up a, a, a good thing? Um, yeah. Minor questions. Resemblance between the post-totalitarian system Hobble describes and the system which exists in the West today surely is uncanny. In the same way that okay, the sign we'll was read, workers of the world unite was a symbol of compliance to the communist system in Czechoslovakia. Today, the rainbow flag or the medical face mask serve as symbol. Okay, um, I may not seem that, that absolutely like, um, yeah, um, the first time that I ran through this video, like, I was absolutely falling out of my chair, but, like, of the sheer, um, yeah, you get it, it's pretty bad, of like, literally, oh no, look, the pride flag is literally a form of, like, Orwellian submission, or like, having a mass is literally, like, yeah, a form of, like, state totalitarian submissions, as if, yeah, Jum I think I could like give a decent revolt tell to that if like it wasn't so self evidently stupid. But yeah. So compliance to the system of globalism. Take the mask for example. A guy could be wearing it not because he actually believes that a deadly pandemic is going on and that it will protect him, but because he sees some woman wearing it and he thinks 
claims that she will scold him for not doing so. Simultaneously, that very person who okay. wears the mask to avoid a confrontation with could be only wearing it because she is afraid that he will scold her for not wearing it. So it gets two people who have not exactly bought into the dogma to go along with the lie in fear of being outed as a wrong. Okay, um, the lie. <sighs> Again, also. Um, very dead giveaway of like. So. From just like some random points on the video, we can conclude that um, this dude is not only extremely anti communist, but also is, you know, pretty, pretty bigoted by saying that the pride flag is a form of submission. Um, also, by also, um, probably a COVID denier by saying that, yeah, it's a that, that, um, yeah, up and that the pandemic is a lie and yeah eventually like all the obviously horrible things um he thinks like yeah eventually eventually like all come to light it's a pretty yeah by taking off the mask the man begins to live in the truth and by doing so the woman might see that Again, living the truth, um, yeah. Again, it basically implies that this year this, yeah, denies um the pandemic, which is, yeah, we obviously know that the pandemic doesn't exist and that, like, we obviously know that it's not like several million people have been killed because of a pandemic. You obviously, there's no way that can ever possibly be correlated to the fact that like all medics diagnose them of like a certain thing. Yeah. That that simply doesn't exist, obviously. He has taken off the mask and do the same. Now they have a group of people who are living in the truth which can grow from there. It's certainly applicable to the present day, and again, I'm far from the first person to point this out. But what I want to look at here is not Um yes, but yeah, you are one of the persons spreading spreading that. Um similarities between the communist system Pavel wrote about and the present day, but what I believe to be a fundamental difference between the two. And I believe that this can be found in the slogan, Workers of the World Unite Itself. It's the rallying cry for a worldwide revolution to bring about a classless workers' utopia, completing Marxist historical dialectic. The Space. slogan dates back to the 19th century. Now, let's yeah, specifically to 1848, I think. Yeah, that was the year when the manifesto was released. Contrast that with analogous slogans employed in the West today. Diversity is our strength. Black lives matter. Stay home, save lives. Our democracy. Build back better. Stand with Ukraine. They are all similar to the Workers of the World Unite slogan from the Communist Manifesto in that they are these Orwellian pledges of submission. Oh, nice! I just like um started talking about like um yeah that you mentioned Orwell, you know, Orwell the anarcho-communist. But, but yeah, um, also the thing that I didn't really say was that, I mean, yeah, again. Basically, the, the, I mean, yeah, I will probably explain, like, why he's, he's thinking that, yeah, that BLM is, like, a massive hashtag to, like, a massive conspiracy to control the people, um, is not true, but I think you can probably figure it out yourself. Is that rather than prophesizing the completion of a grand historical civilizational process like is implied by the slogan workers of the world unite these slogans which are used today in the form of twitter hashtags are only applicable to events of a two or three month window then discarded and replaced with a new slogan with compliance with the global system i believe if you replace the word of the, um like globalist with capitalist then yeah like to be fair it seems like he's extremely close to getting it but yeah, just barely misses it by pointing the problem to globalism and not the actual like root cause of all of this, um, capitalism, um, 
All right, let me explain this because it may be, um, yeah, you may think, what what does that have to do? Um, like, please, the definition of capitalism is the private ownership of property, what are you saying? Um, to which I can respond to the fact that, yes, um, the thing is that it, it causes problems and, yeah, it's not very... Um, sustainable because because of reasons that yeah many people have explained before like I'm going to link you a video like that specifically explains why it's not sustainable so yeah um, the thing is that uh, the system creates a bunch of money for the for the capitalist class um, so yeah, they may want to keep it as for as long as they possibly can. Um, and thus they... And thus they like artificially prolong the their system by... Yeah, by distracting the masses for, for like... By other things. Um, you probably saw it in World War I. Um, the thing that disbanded the second... Um, the second international like, was um the first world war that yeah essentially split the left between those that yeah and were still for um for class struggle and those that yeah just went and supported their own country again in the war that eventually became social democrats um, yeah for example those things um, so yeah, um, this is not, this is no different from that, um, essentially, now the strategies that they are going for is to essentially try to, um, mold the left into just advocating for a bunch of slogans and, yeah, movements that, well, they are probably progressive and leftist, like vaguely leftist and they don't actually challenge the system at hand and um, yeah so, so yeah they don't actually focus on challenging the actual system of capitalism um that is why um it's all of the yeah why um the media adopted this strategies of yeah distracting the working class for for um, from class struggle, um, yeah, um, this sort of strategies have been working for the last um, essentially 80, 90 years by now. Um, essentially, ever since um, the tel the in inventions like the television um, have been made popular, um, yeah. Essentially that, um, yeah, the thing is that he doesn't seem to correlate it with capitalism, but just to globalism, or at least what he thinks it's is globalism, and yeah, it's not, it's not working right. Um, I'm saying right now because he brings up this point like many many more times in the rest of the video so much so that yeah i could go on to say that the rest of the video is basically just repeating the same point over and over um but yeah um i'm still i'm saying that right now so yeah you keep that in mind for the rest of the video um, with a new slogan of compliance to the globalist system I believe that what separates the communist tyranny Havel was writing about in the 1970s and the globalist tyranny which rules the Western world today is that the former was a modernist tyranny and the latter is a postmodernist tyranny. I recently reread the book The Postmodern Condition by Jean Francois Lyotard. In the book, Lyotard defines postmodernism as the loss of the belief in grand historical meta narratives. 
Back in 2020, I made a video about this book and how postmodernity helps explain the death of the historical epic film genre. Here, I want to apply these same ideas to explain the ever-shifting narratives which are used to control the populations of the Western world today. First, what is... Okay. It's a meta-narrative. It's the perception of history as this great story which forms the basis for how we understand society. It's the lens through which we understand our societal knowledge and experiences, and it legitimizes society as a process of completing some grand plan. A meta Okay, um, seems a pretty correct definition. Um... It is often based on religion. The story of creation, divinity, and salvation found in the Bible forms Christianity's meta-narrative. God created the world, he gave his word to the prophets, he came down to earth in human form and died to bring salvation to mankind. This is the grand historical meta-narrative which the West lived under from the late Roman Empire until the 18th or 19th centuries. The Enlightenment is another meta-narrative. The view of history that humanity is progressing towards a greater society through technological and intellectual advancements. Likewise, okay, I agree. Uh -oh. Marxism is also a meta narrative. The narrative that history can be understood through the lens of class struggle. That um, that is not specifically Marxism. I was, it's um, dialectical materialism, if I remember correctly. Um, it's exactly the word that, yeah, um, the viewpoint, uh, yeah, of essentially viewing history as the story of two classes, the idea of, like, the bottom class, which is the majority, and the minority, the upper class, um, which change from, like, the patricians to the, um, to the kings, to the... Yeah, to the capitalists today. Um, yeah, just a minor correction, but yeah. One day the proletariat will overthrow the bourgeoisie and create a class-free egalitarian utopia, which would bring about the end of history as class struggle would end. And this is the one... The end of, like, the dialectical materialism, you may mean. Um, obviously not history. Um, yeah, it's not... Um, yeah, that is on how it works. Obviously, like, there's still history after that. It's just that, yeah, um, class struggle, it's the end of the history of, of class struggle. Um, yeah, you may want to, like, um, make that more clear. I want to focus on here, since I'm comparing the old communist bloc to the West today. But I will say that I don't believe that meta-narratives are necessarily a bad thing. I think that people just naturally form their understanding of truth through narrative. And a meta-narrative is just a narrative that's much longer in society-wide. A religion such as Christianity provided the West with a stable meta-narrative. To be fair, also, you have to use some several meta-narratives in certain cases. Um, yeah. Um, you can just use one because, yeah. Um, some explain certain things, and others explain certain others, and yeah. For example, um, I could point to the, to the series by Vicky one nine 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 about, um, the about Marxist um analysis of like random stuff of um pieces of media, um, yeah. The point there is that, yeah, you can't really use just one viewpoint to, like, um, describe all of history. You can only use it to, um, yeah, in, to, for certain parts of history. ...which have flourished under for centuries. I think there are plenty of problems with the meta-narrative of enlightenment, as I've pointed out on my channel before. The problem with communism wasn't that it's a meta-narrative, but it's that it was a bad meta-narrative which reinforced the tyrannical system. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to reinforce a, a totalitarian system. Um, yeah, it can still exist, for example, even without a state. Um, take anarcho-communism, for example, that, yeah, also uses a, a meta-narrative, as he says, um, of, of class struggle and... Yeah. So, yeah, it uses a... Uh, 
a meta narrative or um, class struggle, but it doesn't have any state or like any hierarchy. Um, that's what it, what I mean basically. Um, next. In the worldwide revolution of the proletariat over the bourgeoisie and the creation of an egalitarian workers' utopia was the meta narrative that upheld the communist system. But today, in post modernity. I mean, yes, but it's not necessary, but it doesn't necessarily need that, um, that, um, that, that, um, that regime to, like, maintain itself, because it did, even without it, for quite a while, for quite a while, um, yeah. We no longer believe in such grand historical narratives. We no longer believe in things like God, the nation, the West, the proletariat, or the bourgeoisie. So how does the... Well, I do um, believe in the proletariat and the bourgeoisie, so yeah, but... Yeah, I guess you're talking about yourself. The current system of globalist tyranny legitimizes itself, since power is legitimized through narratives. It seems to me that rather than one overarching societal narrative through which people understand the world, the West is directed by a series of mini-narratives which change from one month to the next on the whims of political power. Let's just look at how rad- Okay, um, so, yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty heavy image, honestly, um, describes quite a little bit about him, um, to be fair, I also, um, yeah, he probably seems to imply all over this video that the entire left acts like that, um, like, but, yeah, again, I could probably say that it's part of the homogeneous mix in straw man, um, it's a term I use to describe, uh, a fallacy of a straw man composed of mixing many viewpoints at the same time and yeah, treating them as one single point um, and yeah, obviously d doing that leads to many inconsistencies and yeah, many contradictions bec because yeah, um, not all people are the same and yeah um, that is essentially what he does in most of the video, and um, yeah, also probably you should, you should probably have that in mind. The various narratives have changed over the last two years. At the beginning of 2020, you were supposed to believe that there was this deadly pandemic going around, and that is... Okay, so yeah, that implies that yeah, he indeed absolutely denies the pandemic, um, yeah. Your civic duty to stay in your home watching Netflix 24-7 and to wear a mask everywhere. In the middle of 2020, you were supposed to... Maybe because, um, yeah, that is kind of what you should probably do. Um, I believe that the Western world, the United States in particular, was an oppressive white supremacist society and that it was your moral imperative to tear everything perceived to be white down, especially the institution of law enforcement. Um... That always happened like that, at least since 1848, basically. Um, basically, ever since the release of the Communist Manifesto, um, yeah. Um, like, everyone, um, yeah, many people hate the West. Um, yeah, it's definitely not very... Yeah, not very kind of a lie to say that only then it was important and yeah, true. Canada went through something similar in summer 2021 with the mass graves hoax. In late 2020 and early... Um, hold on, please. I don't have any words. I... <laughs> I would like to say something, but yeah... I don't think this is a hoax. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> I hate to say it. So yeah, nice to know that, yeah, um, they still deny the deaths of 6,000, um, indigenous children.
Let's continue. In summer 2021 with the mass graves hoax. In late 2020 and early 2021, in the United States, you were supposed to believe that America was this great democracy whose democratic ideals were under attack by Donald Trump and his... Um... No one said that. I mean, yeah, this dude is like absolutely the king of making stuff up. I mean, yeah, the entire right is, um, that's a pretty contested spot, honestly, between all of the right wing YouTubers. But yeah, um, this is, um, yeah, pretty high spot, definitely. Um, yeah. Simply, um, simply not true. Also, I guess he's referring to the January sixth um coup attempt in the U.S. Capitol. Um, yeah, but I to be fair, I'm not American, so I can't really tell. But I'm quite sure no one said that. Um, you know, I should, I will probably have noticed it. Um. Because turns out I'm quite active on social media, and yeah, this video is supposed to be like also um, um also based on social media events, but I'm not seeing any of that really enough. Whose democratic ideals were under attack by Donald Trump and his right wing extremist followers. The institution. Um. Again, also the U.S. is simply not a democracy. Um. I mean, yeah, obviously, Trump and his supporters um, taking control of the U.S., trying to take control of the U.S. government doesn't help that much, but it is not a democracy. If the police were only months ago condemned as defenders of white supremacy after January 6, 2021, were hailed as these brave defenders of democracy. In Canada, you were supposed to believe the same thing about the Trump. Again, um, yeah, they... Yeah, uh, simply that doesn't happen, um, yeah, to be fair, there's nothing really to, like, um, reply, reply against, um, as it's quite clear he's just making stuff up, honestly, um, yeah, essentially, dare I say, a straw man, um, yeah. So, let's continue. Was protests in early 2022. Then, for the rest of 2021, the pandemic narrative was brought back into the forefront, and you were supposed to believe that it was now your civic duty to take a certain medication, all in the name of saving lives. Anyone who didn't take this medication was to be cast out of society. They weren't to be allowed to have a job or go to a restaurant. Um, doesn't... Kind of weird, because that... Basically, it didn't happen till now, um, yeah, but it didn't actually happen until, like, this year where, like, yeah, getting a vaccine is essentially, um, yeah, you can basically get it everywhere, um, of all sorts, um, yeah. Also, it's weird that he just mentions uh, the vaccine as some medication. Um, yeah, from, for later parts of the video, I know that, from seeing later parts of the video, I know that he's an anti-vaxxer, but, yeah. For a retail store, or even receive medical attention if needed. They were the moral outgroup for whom no sympathy or mercy was to be shown. Now in 2022, you're supposed to believe that Russia is a threat to democracy and that paying ridiculously high food and gas prices caused by the policies of Western governments is your way of supporting Ukraine. And you're supposed to cheer... I mean, yeah, the word in Ukraine is a pretty hard topic to like, yeah, to talk about. But I'm quite sure that, yeah, the way that... Um, Western governments handle it, handled it. Um, yeah, it was pretty bad. Along as Western governments antagonizing nuclear power. If you're a boomer, you're... Again, um, to be fair, I technically have an argument um, that, 
that um, nuclear war is simply not going to happen, honestly. Um, let me explain. So, um, yeah, as you probably, as I explained previously, um, yeah, the capitalist um, elite is trying to, like, um, prolong the system for as long as they possibly can to, like, um, to get as much money as possible, um, but, um, yeah, the, the thing is that, yeah, starting, like, a massive nuclear war, um, will not be convenient for them, so, yeah, that will most likely never happen, um, yeah, you know, but you could say, oh, yeah, but, um, yeah, what about the other country, like, they may not agree, um, maybe it makes profit for them. The thing is, um, it's not like, if they were, like, on their own, um, every, every business owner, every capitalist, um, was on their own, um, capitalism will have fallen long ago. The thing is that, yeah, they basically work together in order to, um, yeah, keep all of their profits going. Um, so, yeah. We're supposed to see the Russia-Ukraine conflict as analogous to World War II, or rather, Hollywood movies made about World War II. And if you're a millennial, you're supposed to see the conflict as analogous to Star Wars or Harry Potter. The same people who months ago were on a moral... Again, um... Yeah, that's just made up. Um, that's not based on anything. Post the hate. Oh. Months ago, or um, yeah. They always give you someone that you're supposed to hate. One day you're supposed to hate. I mean, yes, that is true. Um, another thing they use um is also like pointing to other people and yeah, saying, "Look, um, these people you have to like." Um, go hate them. Um, let's make a reconstruction, actually. Um, some random person. Home, um, in the US, there has, there has never been any, any worse inequality since the Gilded Age in the 1920s and 30s. Extremely weird and extremely bad. Some random, bis some, like, the entire capitalist elite um, look, look over there, um, some Russians are invading Ukraine, um, yeah, go hate them, um, we are absolutely on your side, um, we good, they bad, and yeah, it's essentially like that for most cases, um, yeah, again, I can bring up the, yeah, pretty much every whatever, actually, like, think about it, um, yeah, look, um, this side, the, the proletariat of this side is bad, and the bourgeois of this side is bad, um, us, which we are the bourgeois of our side, are good, and you are good, um, yeah, um, let's absolutely conveniently forget that, yeah, um, yeah, we are like workers and capitalists, and yeah, not um, yeah. Essentially, that sort of thing. You get it. Um, I don't want to prolong this video too much. So yeah. The police and the racists. The next day, you're supposed to hate the conspiracy theorists. Um, to be fair, yeah, you should probably hate on them, but. Um, yeah, the thing is that, yeah, most of them don't, like, hating them doesn't really challenge the system, um, but, yeah, at least you don't make it worse, but yeah, still, like, um, being against them doesn't mean you are, like, against the system, and, yeah, you should probably do a bit more. But yeah, obviously that's not what they want you to do. Um, they want you to, yeah, they want basically all leftists to just some um, concentrate of, on um, yeah, issues that don't really matter in the long run. 
Um, yeah, don't actually challenge capitalism. So yeah, they can still keep the show going. And the anti-medicationers. Today they want you to hate the Russians. Tomorrow they're going to want you to hate the climate change deniers. Yeah. Well, also like, this is this also a, cl a climate change denial. Um, yeah, a climate change denier. Um, pretty okay. Yeah. Um, pretty bad, honestly. The modernist tyranny, like the old communist bloc, there was a clear set of principles and narratives one was required to believe in in order to get by in the system. The same could be said about North Korea today. You must believe that Kim Jong-un is God, the Juche ideals have made North Korea a worker's paradise, and that capitalism... I won't try to defend North Korea, but yeah, there is a, a, a slight exaggeration at best. And I lie at worst. The West suck. Now, I'm not saying this is correct, but at least it's logically consistent and the narratives are permanent. North Koreans believe the same thing they believed 30 years ago, more or less. But in a postmodern tyranny, it's not even clear what exactly you're supposed to believe. What you're supposed to believe is whatever is beneficial to the elites and the cause of globalism. Holy shit. You actually got it. I, I mean, yeah. To be fair, the only thing required for, like, for it to be, um, yeah. To be fair, the only thing that he should actually change in the video is to replace the word globalist with capitalist. But yeah, the rest is true, um, yeah. They essentially want to, they essentially want you to believe, like, certain things that, yeah, don't actually challenge the system of capitalism, and yeah, they can still keep profiting from you and yeah at any given time and it changes so rapidly that anyone could find themselves in trouble for wrong think meaning they will twist themselves into knots in order to come down on the right side of the power structure a great example of this today is how we have come to understand science especially in the last two years it's interesting what Jean-Francois Lyotard says about science in the postmodern condition he writes that in modernity science was used to legitimize the meta narratives which society was founded on an example of this could be found in 17th century Europe under the meta narrative of Christianity, scientists um, yeah, really saw science as the practice of revealing God's creation. So through scientific discovery, man was learning more about how God created the world. Under the meta narrative of the Enlightenment, science was seen as a means of progress. Now through scientific um, discovery, we can advance technology also probably true. and intellectually, bringing about greater prosperity. Well, under the meta narrative of Marxism, science was seen as a tool through which the proletariat could liberate themselves from the bourgeoisie and the oppression and alienation. Um, that is true. Um, to be fair, I also like slightly use um, yeah, the previous um, narrative, but yeah, also like the Marxist narrative is quite correct, honestly. Which capitalism brought about. So science itself is never and never has been. In modernity, it was understood through the lens of various meta narratives. But in post modernity, yeah. when we no longer believe in meta narratives, science is just determined by the whims of. Oh, at least you don't believe in, in um, those narratives. Um, we still do. Political power at the moment, meaning it can change at any time. This is embodied by the trust the science meme, which has become extremely relevant over the last two years. Think about how many times. The science, meaning what those are. Okay, um, yeah, the, the image is, yeah, pretty jikesy. Um, to be fair, I, to be fair, I would like to respond to, like, uh, many of the things he says on the video, but yeah, essentially when some, a claim is absolutely made up, no examples are given, um, no sources are given, um, Nothing, yeah, the only thing you can say is like, the only thing you can do is to laugh about it, um, and yeah, it's not different here. The power of claiming is true has changed on a dime when it was politically convenient. An absolutely incredible example of this happened in summer 2020, in spring of that Okay, year, he's finally going to give an example, okay. At the beginning of the so-called pandemic, people were So-called, okay stay inside their homes for all hours of the day. The expert said that as... Yeah, you probably should have 
Um, to be fair, I think it was honest. In my opinion, it was far too late when they, when it was actually enforced, which was um, the fifth on um, March the fifteenth, on most countries. Um, yeah. Well, it's okay. But just meeting one of your friends at the park was to risk spreading a certain deadly illness. There were a few protests against these policies in spring 2020 in some cities, which only had a couple hundred attendees. These demonstrations were condemned by health officials for recklessly spreading this illness. But and also for like, yeah, um, recklessly like spreading, um, yeah, misinformation about the illness. I'm just saying, maybe, maybe. Um, then only a few weeks later, there were the BLM protests across the United States uh, and several other countries. These had tens of thousands of attendees, but these same health officials didn't condemn them. But rather, they said that the authorities. Oh, maybe because um yeah they didn't um like immediately um yeah advocate for the misinformation about like the pandemic and yeah also maybe because they um use masks which um yeah kind of protect you from the virus you're saying a slight minor detail shouldn't try to shut them down some even went so far as to suggest that the blm protests actually slowed down the spread of the illness so what we saw was one mini there um to be fair, there were many articles, and yeah, it's probably quite obvious to say that, yeah, it's probably cherry-picked. The pandemic overlapped with another mini-narrative, BLM, and the science had to be updated. This really should have discredited all these... Uh, no, maybe be if because um, you didn't understand the science in the first place, on uh, on you misrepresented it. In order to specifically show that it's bad. Institutions which made this claim, but despite a clumsy transition from one mini narrative to another, they were able to get away with it. In 2021, there were massive protests against forced medications and QR passports. These took place across the world, and many of them had tens of thousands of attendees. The media just gave up on the narrative that these demonstrations spread the illness. It was. Um. Yes, because um by that point it wasn't because of um about the inf about the people being infected, but um about the vaccines. Honestly, like my the also the, like it didn't happen around the world. Something, yeah. Also, that I, that yeah, he forgot to not to um to mention, um. They literally only exclusively happen in the West, um, legitimately, um, by a bunch of people that want to, like, try to portray themselves as, yeah, oppressed. Okay, I'm not going to, like, go down the Operation Olympics, like, yeah, sort of shit, but, yeah, um, that try to, like, frame themselves as oppressed because of that. Um, not like they're not pressed in like other ways, like for example, yeah, um, surplus value extraction, but yeah, I mean, in the context of the, of the vaccines, um, and yeah, they made a huge scandal because they had to be poked with like, uh, yeah, with a vaccine and yeah. Obviously not true. So they just didn't report on them at all. How were they able to get away with some They did. They just didn't um, use that um, the narrative of like the cases. Um, yeah. Obvious lies which are just out in the open for all to see. I think it has a lot to do with the ever present role that media and information plays in our lives today. In his book, Leotard theorized that the nation states in the future would fight wars over information the same way they fought over resources and land in the past. Now, I don't think nation states are the real players today. The powers that be is... Again, um, yeah, pretty... Yeah, just random claims. Um, probably... Um, I will say that he seems to have forgotten about the source of that. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I can just make a book about, like, 
claiming a bunch of like crazy shit and yeah like obviously everyone's going to believe it because I mean yeah who needs nuance who needs like um an explanation for things who needs like to actually need evidence of shit um before believing it preceded those but there are warlike determination to control information is for certain Today, people are bombarded with information 24-7 via their screens. This constant barrage of information okay. overloads their ability to process any of them. People today do not have the mental capacity to remember what they believed three months ago. No one did. Um, I mean, they never did, honestly. Like, yeah, the brain has always been kind of shady, honestly. Um, because in that space of time, they are overwhelmed by one narrative after another to the point where something that only happened a couple months ago, which in another era would be seen as very recent, is perceived as ancient history. Their brain needs to clear its memory space every couple of months to make room for the new information they need to consume. Another great example of this is with the certain medication. People were initially told in early 2021 okay. that this medication was going to end the pandemic. Two shots and then that's it. Then a few months later they were telling us well, now you actually need to get a third. Learns out that, yeah, you can actually, like, yeah, be a bit too optimistic about things and, yeah, you have to, um, yeah, slightly retreat because you were too optimistic the first time you said it. Maybe that th can happen and not, and, yeah, maybe it's not, like, a huge hoax. Just saying. And then they said you'll need to get a fourth shot. And then they said, you'll probably need one every few months. People had completely forgotten the original promise because the media information narrative machine had flooded their minds so much over that time that it was just lost in a big sea of information. And in spring 2022, when the negative side effects of this medication are being revealed, the public is now capped. They were already known since the beginning. Um, it's just that, yeah, essentially they were just known at they were known since the beginning and yeah like even when the first time that i took the copy shot um like that was on december um not in spring of 2022 um all this is spring in the northern pole um yeah they still uh, they still told me that yeah i could have side effects so yeah it's not like they were absolutely unknown and anyways, yeah, I can also argue that, you know, maybe it's slightly better to like, um, feel slightly bad in the, he to have a slight headache for like two hours, um, than, yeah, being infected and fucking killed by COVID, if you didn't take the shot. Okay, um, yeah, I guess, but, again, um, they were already known since the beginning, um, yeah. The dissident right swept up in this. They proclaimed that the pandemic was over and done with when the news shifted away, seemingly forgetting all the horrible things which were done over the last two years and the collateral damage which will be with us for years to come. This really is how this postmodern tyrannical system is able to get away with the most blatant of lies. The narratives in the public consciousness move so quickly that any inconvenient contradictions which emerge will be lost in the news cycle in a matter of days. So when um, this help was half being like that, um, or at least since, yeah, since the, since, um, technological advance, advancement has been, um, growing exponentially since the, since the last couple of centuries, um, yeah, maybe it has to do with that and not because of, like, some random conspiracy theory. That respect, the truth simply doesn't matter anymore. You'd think that today in an era when the public has an unprecedented access to information, it would be more difficult for a regime to get away with such obvious lies. But that has not been the case, because the endless bombardment of false information is able to drown out the truth. Going back to Vaslav Havel's essay, The Power of the Powerless, the regime which he was opposing in the 1970s in the Middle Eastern Bloc was a modernist theory. 
The process of passive resistance, which she described, was to chip away at the grand meta narrative that the communist system was based on. Again, I do think that many of the tactics which she recommended are, oh. are useful today. Before I have already responded to this before, so yeah. Um... The problem is that the system today is no longer based on one overarching historical meta narrative, but many different mini narratives which fluctuate in their preeminence in the public consciousness. When one of their mini narratives I mean, it has been like that for quite a while now, so yeah, not really um, news. Um, yeah, at least in the West, it has been going on for a while of the mini narratives. Um, yeah, capitalism doesn't really have that much of a meta narrative. Um, socialism does, though. Um, yeah, that's why. Um, yeah, that's why that's where um the class conflict um yeah happened um yeah was pure apart they can just take it out of focus and replace it with another mini narrative and the public seems to fall in line again every time. This happened with the pandemic. Once enough discontent was built up in a sizable proportion of the population, they just dropped that narrative and replaced it with the narrative surrounding the Ukraine conflict. And it seems like I mean, yeah, it's still true, but, um, again, it's probably because of, like, yeah, trying to, I mean, yeah, the reason of why, like, capitalism has been in our teeth at all is because, is to, um, keep us entertained, and, yeah, not actually look at, you know, things like class struggle that may seem a bit more important than, yeah, like, um, some conflict fight us some miles away, or, um, yeah, being pogged two times by, we like, a life-saving vaccine, or, um, yeah, stuff like that. Um, yeah. They've been able to take the public for a ride yet again and bury the animosity which they had accumulated. Now, I don't think it's accurate to say that people don't believe in any kind of meta-narratives today. For example, the narratives of black liberation, decolonization, or certain events during World War II do form what I would call the anti-white meta-narrative. Oh, holy. The anti-white narrative. Wow. Um, yeah. I... I mean, yeah, let's just start with the obvious and say that, yeah, it's basically things made up by, um races but to like try to justify the fact that yeah they um kind of um to like basically justify the racism of but like look what about um this the evil like um black people that are trying to um make up conspiracy theory like narrative and anti, anti white narrative so yeah after that let's continue this is a long historical narrative which determines how we understand the issue of race today. Similar narratives exist for gender and sexuality as well. These do resemble meta-narratives. They've been built up since the end of the Second World War, before post-modernity had fully taken effect. What I think has happened over the last few years is that these bigger narratives have been integrated into a more recent system of rapid narrative change. They're always at aka de radicalized for being um from being um yeah from being anti capitalist at this core because they knew that yeah capitalism was a fault for like all of those things for the for um current racism for um yeah for like patriarchy for like heteronormativity and yeah, all that stuff, um, yeah, to, um, yeah, basically being a tool of the, basically being co-opted, basically just that. Active to some degree, the ideology remains in place, and so do the policies, but the narratives fluctuate in their predominance in the public's mind. For example, the anti-white narrative was first and foremost in 2016 before the Trump election, 
summer 2020 and during major events like the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. But then they take a backseat temporarily when there's a drive to get everyone to take a medication or when they want to fear monger about Russia or the dangers posed by climate change. This process of control through rapid narrative change is reflected by the behavior of normies on social media, or the NPCs as they're now known. There's the new meme, I... Oh yeah, this meme, holy shit. You know what they're also like? Uh, I support the opposite of the current thing meme, you know? Um, yeah. Also, yeah, not very, not that good, honestly. But yeah, essentially the I support the current thing meme is a pretty, um, pretty horrible straw man. A pretty dangerous one, by the way. Um, yeah, pretty suspicious. Um, yeah, nothing to say really. Um, it's simply based on like people that don't exist. Um, or at least also the homogeneous mix in Strawman. Um, I will say that it's more of that sort of thing of like mixing 30 positions and yeah, thinking that a person that has all 30 positions at the same time, um, yeah, essentially exaggerating and you got this. Um, yeah, it's essentially that. Um, just a product of the homogeneous mixing straw man of like mixing um yeah progressives leftists um social democrats yada 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 basically yeah everyone that they dislike and yeah basically grouping them together and yeah you got you have this um there's simply really nothing to say um it's essentially just boils down to that and um, yeah it's quite dishonest to be said to be fair support the current thing i think this perfectly captures the essence of postmodern tyranny the npc picks up signals from the media what they're supposed to believe today and on a dime they adopt their new beliefs and change their profile picture signaling oh yeah because you are absolutely not that yeah um no one is immune to propaganda um yeah um to be fair and that note i could probably end the video here um i have watched the rest of the video and it's not really interesting it is essentially mostly reformulating the, the other points um yeah to be fair i'm also quite sure on time to like actually um and the entire thing and also this video is becoming quite long already so yeah um so with all this um i hope you have liked the video um yeah like press the the like subscribe and um, the bell buttons um to like support me on my channel um yeah i hope i can make more videos um you can actually suggest me videos to do, um, to like, yeah, to respond to, um, it will be pretty cool, and um, yeah, but yeah, I, I really have to go, um, so yeah, bye, see you later.